Welcome everyone. I'm Joanna Barto. I'm the Chair of International Languages and Cultures and um, we could just sort of go around the pictures and introduce ourselves. Actually, Umu, would you like to start in by introducing yourself? Oh yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> my name is Umu and currently I am a junior at St. Mary's College of Maryland. I am a double major in biology and French and I've decided to major in French to keep my French up and at it. And I really appreciate it, the French program, and I really enjoy it. It's a good balance between biology, too. Thank you. And uh, Jingxi? Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I, my name is Jing Qi Fu. Uh, I'm a Chinese uh, instructor at the college. I've been working here for more than 20 years. Um, so I love every minute of it. Um, uh, so I, now I'm very depressed. I don't see my students <laughs> face, face to face. Uh, it, online teaching is good, um, but uh, it does not replace the uh, small class interactions with, uh, with students. Um, so, but uh, I, I try to <laughs> go through this <laughs> with others. Yeah, um, welcome to this uh, session. And Anne? Uh, hi, I am uh, Anne Leblanc. I have been at St. Mary's even longer than uh, uh, <laughs> Professor Fu. Um, uh, I have a French name. I am originally from Belgium, but uh, I teach um, uh, German at St. Mary's. And I would echo uh, uh, Jinji. Uh, I'm very appreciative of the fact that we can still uh, meet students through uh, uh, Zoom and have some face-to-face -face time, but uh, I'm really missing uh, interacting with students uh, on a personal basis uh, in the physical space of uh, St. Mary's. And George? Uh, my name is George McLeod. I'm a professor of French at St. Mary's. Um, this is my fourth year. Um, and yeah, I would echo what my colleague said. I do really miss uh, being in the classroom, um, but I'm teaching a, all my classes now online and Umu is in one of those classes. And, uh, you know, I am trying to find ways to keep things dynamic, keep things moving, keep people engaged and create a sense of community even online. So, um, uh, yeah, so that's, I do really miss teaching in person, but it has been fun in, in different ways to try to find ways to keep people connected even if it's just having a cat wave hello to start things off <laughs> um, and then uh, moving into the lessons. So, um, so I, we have been trying to make the best of it, but I've told Umu and all my students, I do, I do miss it a lot. I'm, I miss seeing my students. And uh, I guess I should say that I've been at St. Mary's since 2001, so I'm perilously close to have been, uh, to have been here for 20 years. Uh, I teach Spanish and um, I'm uh, really glad that we've been able to keep our synchronous teaching going. Um, it really um, continues our sense of community that we've already built uh, face to face. And um, we find that the students really appreciate having that, that regular face-to-face uh, -face time and sometimes we just begin talking about things beyond the class topic at the end of class and people linger because it's just really enjoyable to um, stay uh, in touch with our communities that we've already built in class so all right well we were thinking of starting this session just finding out from you all who are our guests what languages you study what your interests are um, so I don't know if Someone wants to jump in, or if I should call on the names I see on my screen, <laughs> as we say in our classes. So, volunteers or victims? <laughs> no? Are you oh. you're muted? Yeah, yeah. I can go first. Okay. Yeah, um, hi, Gabby. So, I'm a transfer student. I am coming from Salisbury. So, when I come to St. Mary's, I will be a sophomore. Um, I currently uh, major in ESOL, so English. Uh, mm -hmm teaching English as a second language, um, and my minor is Spanish, so I've been studying Spanish for a couple years now. I studied it all throughout high school, and now I study it in college. Um, I'd like to keep that up. I really enjoy Spanish, and I hope to teach in a Spanish. That's wonderful, wonderful. We have um, several graduates who teach ESOL now, so from different yep. languages. I'm excited for that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, and I, I will also mention that I teach uh, a community-based learning course where you go out into the community and work with children in the local schools who are um, learning English. So. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Anyone else? Um, Anna, uh, do you want to just say what language you uh, study or languages? Yes, ma'am. So my name is Anna Yemelyanova. I'm in 11th grade as of now, and I come from an immigrant family, and I'm from an international school. So there's a lot of languages, but really it enforces Latin. So I've learned Latin for about four years, and I'm really interested in either Spanish or Chinese because they're both really big now, but there are a lot of Chinese students in our school as well. And I can, I know that it's very challenging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, actually you can uh, realize both dreams um, because <laughs> we have uh, students who double major uh, in two of uh, the languages we offer. In the past, we had uh, quite a bit, uh, quite a few majoring in Chinese and uh, Spanish. And they kind of uh, find uh, a topic to work on their, uh, for their senior thesis. This one person um, studied the uh, the soil production, like yeah. between oh, wow. Argentina and uh, China. Uh, yeah. So mm -hmm. the, the supply chains is was very fascinating. Yeah. So yeah. You are, you, she, she had studied in Argentina and then... And, and China. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow, thank you. Yeah. Um, someone else? Um, oh, oh, Tess, hi. <laughs> hi. Um, so I've taken French since um, sixth grade, and then I went to Germany last year on a year exchange. Then prior to that, in high school, I took Spanish for two years. Then I went to Germany and I didn't take Spanish in Germany. But I think I'd like to take um, French and German at St. Mary's, I think. <laughs> Did you come to... Um... Uh, uh, I, I met you at the um, the interest. Yes, yeah, yeah. I remember you. I talked to you at that uh, uh, point. Yeah, you had to um, exchange student living. Because yeah, we, he had to go home. He went home. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad he <laughs> he made it home because locally many exchange students are still uh, uh, stuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, but that's a, a great uh, a combination uh, also. And um, uh, I mean, the German pro uh, program is uh, uh, small, but it's heavily centered around um, uh, projects. Yeah. Um, at one point, we had a project around uh, uh, refugees uh, in Europe. Um, we, have, we have had projects about uh, um, commemorating, remembering uh, the past, and there is always a, a comparison um, with the same topics in the United States and uh, around Europe, yeah, because, um, I mean, national borders are still uh, in place and important, but it's clear that uh, um, even when you are focusing on an issue in Germany, uh, it has echoes all over Europe. Yeah? So uh, uh, when you uh, study German and uh, uh, France, you, uh, French, you will have uh, uh, plenty of opportunity to build uh, bridges between those two uh, subjects. And uh, Tess, uh, why are you excited to study French? I think if, okay, so I've taken it since sixth grade. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking if I'm not, if the goal isn't complete fluency, what, what did I take all, like, all those years for? <laughs> like, I'd, I'd want to become fluent, fluent. Because I, I was in German and I spoke okay German, but I wasn't fluent, fluent. But okay. <laughs> it'd be cool to get to that, that point, yeah. Yeah, and, and definitely I think you'll find that um, if you're able to study abroad your junior year, which uh, hopefully by then uh, that, that, that should be uh, that should be a problem, <laughs> um, then I think a lot of our students do come back and they have that you know near near native fluency and they speak they speak really really well. Um, 
And, um, and Umu can talk about this because we've had a lot of classes together. Um, we also try to help you get that fluency through interesting projects. Uh, we had a class where students uh, did uh, slam, uh, slam poems, which was super <laughs> amazing and fun. Uh, right now, students are writing their own graphic novels, including Umu, who is working on that right now. Um, cool. So yeah, so we try to, you know, I mean, we do obviously have high standards for our students and, and uh, you know, push them to, to succeed. But while doing that, we also try to have some fun with the language and do some interesting creative stuff. Um, Umu, I don't know if you want to speak briefly about uh, some of the projects you've done in French class. Yeah, um, I think my the slam was my favorite project. <laughs> um, and then like, it wasn't just writing a poetry, we also had to present it in front of the class with background music. Um, I also like the doing the comic book because it brings a whole lot of ideas and then you also want to think about the visual aspect but also the language behind it. Yeah. And, and we read a lot of um, French graphic novels. So it's a comic book format, uh, but they're for adult readers. And so we've read one that takes place in West Africa, one that takes place in Iran, one that's in Syria. We're doing one that takes place in Quebec. Um, so the idea is to help you work towards fluency through as many engaging, different and interesting ways as possible. Awesome. Does anyone else want to talk about what languages they study, um, their interests? Gregory, Garrett, Melissa? You don't have to. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, why don't we we continue on, and um, we're we're going to present you with a very short video about our uh, department, and then a really brief um, presentation. But we don't want to spend the whole time talking at you. <laughs> no, um, we just want to provide you some extra information. Um, and keep asking any questions you have through the chat function, or uh, you can just ask your questions at the end. So um, I am going to pull up the video now and share my screen with you all. Let's see. Um, all right, does everyone see that? Yeah. All right. So, yeah. uh, here we go. International languages and cultures offer students a possibility for them to be fluent in a second language. We are very conscious about the fact that learning a language is not just about learning a language. We prepare students not just to speak the language, not just to learn about the cultures, but also to study abroad. Um, almost all of our students study abroad. They're learning how to think critically, how to write, how to speak. Uh, and so when they graduate, not only do they have this linguistic competency, they also have these skills that are just valued by all employers. I learned very quickly thanks to the professors. Um, it also gave me an opportunity to study abroad because if there wasn't a Chinese language here, I would not have been able to go to Shanghai for a semester. So I, along with this language, I was given an opportunity that I never thought I would be able to have. So when they're going into a world where you have uh, lots of different cultures, where you have uh, globalized international business, um, they just have so much to offer. Uh, so I, I always say that our students do everything that liberal arts majors do, and they do it in a second language. And that's a really unique and valuable skill set. People may not to realize Professor McLeod is in the <laughs> Yes, yes, he's our, 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 our star there in the video. <laughs> Pre-quarantine uh, pre without the beard, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and actually, I mean, we, um, you know, already uh, some of my colleagues have mentioned this, we don't want to ignore the unusual circumstances under which we're meeting. And we just wanted to point out that um, 
the current circumstances actually reinforce our understanding that we're all uh, interconnected across the globe and it, it actually reinforces our commitment to studying different languages and cultures um, because as we have heard time and time again recently we're all in this together <laughs> you know? um, so uh, there are just a, a, a couple of things I want to emphasize from that short video that we uh, saw. In, at St. Mary's in our department, we have you using the language to think, write, and speak critically. Our small classes mean uh, active student participation, individualized attention, and frequent feedback. Uh, we do lots of cool projects <laughs> from projects in class and the St. Mary's project at the end of the major, which develops skills valued by employers. Um, and, and they also allow for you to uh, gain fluency in creative ways, as um, Professor McLeod was saying. Um, almost all of our students study abroad, and I will say this again later, uh, the cost of a semester with one of our exchange partners is the same as a semester on campus and students can complete an important part of their major credits uh, while studying abroad. Um, I'm now going to uh, switch to a PowerPoint. And again, I'm not going to talk for a long time, but just want to point out some uh, important points. Whoop. Hang on here. Just switching screens. Okay, here we go. Okay, uh, so I mentioned our small classes, cool projects, and study abroad. Um, I also want to uh, emphasize that we are a cultural studies major and therefore we study a wide variety of media. Um, we do work a lot with literary texts because literature is an engaging medium to examine the nuances of language and how meaning is communicated, which is a professional skill as well as um, an academic um, intellectual skill. And at, but at the same time, we also work with journalism, video and film, art and digital media. Um, our projects create graduates who are self-reflective and effective communicators in different contexts. And these are professional skills. Uh, you engage in directed research, digital media creation, graphic novel creation, uh, as we've just heard. Uh, creating advertising copy, poetry slams, creative writing, exhibits, community-based projects, uh, professional quality translation. So these are just some of the examples of the uh, kind of projects that um, you will engage in in our classes. Uh, and through those projects, you are learning effective communication, rigorous analysis, and um, excellent, uh, excellent writing skills. So um, I've mentioned some of our cool in-class projects. I also want to mention the St. Mary's project, which is interdisciplinary. Uh, in the senior year, you work closely with a faculty mentor. Um, it is a project guided by your interests and also your professional goals. So the outcome of the St. Mary's project is not just a refinement of the skills I've already mentioned, but also um, the production of a, a sort of deliverable that you can show to either graduate programs or potential employers about how you have um, produced professional quality work uh, aimed at areas uh, of interest to you professionally. Uh, I do want to mention that we are in the process of developing a global communication and digital studies minor. Um, and perhaps Professor McLeod can speak more about that because he's one of the faculty members deeply um, uh, working deeply on that development. Uh, I also want to finally emphasize again uh, how experiential learning is a component of our curriculum at different stages through coursework, through the St. Mary's project, um, and of course also through study abroad. And let me mention one more time that study abroad 
is an integral part of our program. Um, our study abroad partners cost the same or sometimes less than a semester on campus. And almost all of our majors complete an important portion of their studies abroad. Uh, finally, uh, I want to make sure it's clear that all of our classes are taught by faculty members. So that's different from uh, large universities and sometimes even some colleges. And I want to mention that every year we have Fulbright language teaching assistants. Um, they are um, sort of our, our partners in uh, working with our students. They provide opportunities to communicate in the language with peers. And this is, by the way, a photograph of our FLTAs from this year before they regrettably had to go home. <laughs> Um, they were from France, Germany, and Uruguay. Um, our Fulbright language teaching assistants also help us provide cultural context and a connection with current uh, youth culture in their home countries. They lead conversation sessions and, and create uh, cultural events. Um, I want you to um, uh, take down this tiny URL link because that is to a folder that's publicly accessible where you can see brochures about our department. And I also wanted to make sure that you have my uh, contact information in case at the end of this presentation you want to um, contact either me with more questions or one of our fellow faculty, my fellow faculty members with questions about particular programs. So that is um, my presentation for now. I also have actually examples of what our, um, what our graduates are doing. And I, again, to, to not go on for a long time, I don't wanna spend a lot of time on that, but just quickly mention that uh, in recent years, for example, our Chinese students have been particularly successful in obtaining coveted scholarships. So you have information about that here. They've also attended uh, prestigious graduate schools. Um, an, an example of one of the one of our successful graduates is uh, Nadine Postolaki, who uh, graduated after completing a St. Mary's project that was a community-based project with a local school. And um, after graduation, she went to teach English for a year in Spain actually contacted and met a professor in Spain who had written a book on the topic of her St. Mary's project. He invited her to present on her St. Mary's project in Spain. And um, now she is a doctoral student in educational psychology at Columbia University. Um, uh, they Schleu, <laughs> if I pronounce his last name correctly, um, is working locally at Pax River. And we wanted to share this quotation from him about how um, when he was interviewed for that job, they told him, we're more excited about working with you than uh, a lot of STEM people we interview. We like people who can think in a different way. And that kind of captures um, the, the spirit of St. Mary's, the liberal arts, and, and the mission of our program. And there are other examples which I can share with you if they um, work logically with our conversation, but um, I'd like to switch to um, uh, your questions if you have any. Um, uh, and I don't know, Tammy, have you been checking the questions in chat? Are there any questions? Um, I'm not seeing any questions in chat unless I'm looking at it wrong. Okay. Um, <laughs> but people are welcome to turn off their mics at this point if they want to speak up and ask questions. Hi, um, I actually did have a question. I was wondering if there was one thing you could change about the program, what would it be? Huh. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, <sighs> well, we're, we're trying to add the... Um, uh, the global communication and digital studies minor. So that's one thing we're actively trying to change in the sense that our students are already doing a lot of projects where they're you're doing podcasts or they're uh, making films or making these graphic novels. And we want them to get 
like recognition for that in their degree and to put on their CV. Um, so in terms of something we're trying to change, I guess it would be making sure our students have like a, a piece of paper saying that, you know, hey, we're not just learning the language, but we learned all of these tools that let us communicate in a international language and lots of different media. So we're working on getting that official, that that could be a part of your degree, not just that you speak the language, but that you uh, know how to communicate in lots of different ways and make projects and do things in that language too. Gotcha, cool. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, I don't think there is anything necessarily that um, uh, we want to change, but there are things that we always want to, to have uh, more of. Uh, for example, um, we have different language uh, sections. We have a common core because uh, all students take an introduction to cultural studies class uh, together. And they also uh, meet each other while they are developing their ideas for their St. Mary's project. But um, of course, there are also walls between the sections that we constantly try to uh, dismantle. And I think this uh, one of the, maybe the positive aspects that have come from uh, this ongoing crisis is that it forces us to uh, uh, meet together as a uh, as a department. Uh, I mean, both with students and with uh, uh, colleagues. Yeah, but it's not. Um, I mean, something that we really uh, are unhappy about. It's just something that need constant uh, uh, work and effort to uh, establish. Uh, Xingxi, were you going to? Uh, yes, I think uh, we've, um, we're have we kind of uh, in the constant state of thinking how to improve our curriculum. So uh, every mm -hmm. year or every class, we try to modify or add the new stuff that reflect the current uh, situation. So a lot of us are thinking of uh, introducing the digital project to our class. Uh, so we want also our project to be kind of a deliverable so that uh, you can uh, advertise it and uh, share it with the audience at large. So these are small things we're trying to incorporate into our courses. Um, just one example that we're trying to modify our programs. So we did have a question come up in the chat. Do all students take the same cultural studies class or does each language have their own specific cultural studies course? No, they all take um, uh, the same class. And I can say a little bit about it because uh, I'm teaching it uh, uh, this semester. Uh, so um, in some ways it is, uh, um, well, it's a, a fairly abstract uh, class in the sense that uh, it deals with uh, large uh, uh, cultural uh, issues like uh, identity, uh, nationality, uh, the relationship even between uh, uh, biology and culture, uh, digital media. Um, the chapter for next week is uh, youth culture and resistance, yeah. Uh, so those are uh, uh, issues that, um, of course, uh, play themselves out in different ways in different cultures, but uh, they are of common concern to uh, uh, all cultures. Yeah. Uh, so um, it's really great this semester because uh, I have students from uh, uh, different lang from all different um, language sections. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, it's fairly abstract, but uh, in the second half of each class, uh, uh, we apply um, uh, the topic to a kind of um, current issue or um, um, a specific uh, cultural issue. And that is sometimes um, uh, culturally uh, uh, specific, um, but not always. So I think it's really important to have um, uh, students together at some point. And then they come together uh, for a second time when they are writing their proposals uh, for the SMP, which is also a class that I'm teaching uh, uh, this semester. Uh, so students write their proposal um, 
in English and their audience. Uh, you know, I always tell them there are two things that are very important uh, for the SMP. First, that it emanates from their own interests and passions, but also that it resonates to other people um, uh, in the field of cultural studies. And their first uh, audience is uh, their fellow students. Uh, so um, they start out writing a proposal, a two-page proposal, it's not long, uh, in English. Uh, they talk to different faculty. You know, I always say, okay, now you're going to talk to uh, uh, Professor Fu, or this week you ne uh, need to go and talk to Professor uh, uh, McLeod. And it's not always a professor in their own target language, because sometimes uh, uh, there is a person in another language section that has expertise in something that uh, uh, they need. And then um, by the end of the semester, they have um, a mentor in their target language. And then, except for Chinese, which takes longer to acquire, they shift towards uh, uh, their target language. Uh, so one of the things I think that makes the SMP uh, really impressive is that uh, most of it happens in uh, uh, German or uh, French or uh, Spanish. Yeah? And it's something that students find very hard to imagine um, before they do it. Yeah? Imagine uh, uh, writing um, uh, 40 or 50 or 60 pages in uh, uh, the language that you're studying, but it works. We have had uh, uh, great SMPs. Yeah? Um, we tell students start writing early so that uh, you have enough time to polish the language. Uh, the TAs are normally very helpful in uh, doing the kind of nitty gritty uh, editing that even the best language majors uh, uh, still need in their senior year. And I would say that we need as professionals when we uh, uh, submit uh, uh, something both in English and in uh, another language. And then at the very end, uh, uh, students present their uh, SMPs and that's again in English. Yeah? So uh, uh, they present to the faculty of the department, to students in the department, uh, to their friends from other uh, uh, fields, uh, I mean, they invite their parents, they invite uh, uh, mentors, sometimes high school uh, uh, teachers if they have stayed uh, in contact. But we consider, I mean, um, the new minor is not only digital media, it's global communication. Yeah? And that is a very important uh, um, uh, aspect of uh, what we offer in the department. So we really find it important that students um, come together. Yeah? But uh, we also have gateway uh, uh, courses before you enter uh, uh, the major and there are issues of cultural studies that are uh, specific to your language area um, or um, uh, discussed. There is uh, a, um, a back and forth between uh, the introduction to cultural studies in English and then what people do in their target uh, languages. Are you all seeing the questions in the chat? We have um, working with children and communities was mentioned or their qualifications for or special scheduling necessary to participate? Um, we work with what your particular schedule is. Um, and in fact, I mentioned the community-based course that I teach that integrates working with uh, English language learners in the local schools. But every semester, in the meantime, I supervise um, either as volunteers or independent uh, study. As an independent study, I supervise uh, tutors in the community. And uh, usually it's in the morning, but we work with students on transportation, on scheduling. Um, the schools have come to depend on our students for this. So they are really eager to give as much flexibility as possible to, to allow as many students as possible to participate. So no worries on that. 
<laughs> um, is there another? And yeah, what are some examples of your favorite St. Mary's projects? Um, what about them impressed or interest you? <laughs> There's so many. Uh, if I may. <laughs> oh. That's a difficult question. Yeah. Uh, let me say a few things about uh, uh, that. Um, so in Chinese, uh, as mentioned, that uh, because it takes uh, much longer to, um, to use the language for, at the same level as you would uh, for European languages. So uh, for, for uh, senior thesis, we don't ask them to write everything in Chinese, but uh, they have to incorporate a significant Chinese component, uh, be it uh, reading about the language, uh, I mean, uh, reading in language or interviewing in the language, etc. So some of the projects uh, that are really fascinating are uh, surprisingly creative uh, novella. So uh, a few students in the past wrote about, um, so uh, uh, nove wrote novella based on a particular period in China. So for to this kind of project to work, they have to really be knowledgeable about that uh, uh, particular period. Uh, so this person uh, wrote about uh, uh, a novella based on the Great Leap Forward, that's a political uh, campaign uh, in the late 50s. So she was very accurate at the end. She developed a sense what would happen in a uh, imaginary situation. And uh, she created some uh, details, um, but uh, I did not know whether it could be true or not. Then I went back to China. I was uh, doing my own field work in the village. It just happened that I heard the similar story. <laughs> wow. The story, it's uh, amazing, amazing. Uh, it's very uh, sad story, so I don't want to <laughs> drink. <laughs> kind of, uh, so you develop a sense of history, uh, then you can imagine what uh, could happen based on your knowledge of that period, and then you kind of uh, put it in the novel. Uh, it's uh, just uh, amazing. Um, and all of her, her uh, titles is uh, named by a proverb in Chinese, <laughs> so really uh, amazing work. Yeah, so that's one example among um, many. Yeah, I think that, I mean, it's hard to say what uh, a few favorites because, I mean, there are so many uh, good SMPs that uh, I can think of, but uh, some that um, have really moved me in, in the last uh, couple of years is uh, students do um, oral history projects, often in combination with uh, uh, study abroad. So uh, a few years ago, for example, there was a student who had spent uh, uh, time in Nice, in France, uh, as a child. Yeah, and you might remember the uh, uh, attacks, the terrorist attacks in Nice. Uh, um, I mean, before you went to uh, the year before you went to high school. Yeah, and uh, so this student wondered. Um, what it meant uh, to be French to uh, Muslim uh, women uh, living there. Uh, so um, uh, she had uh, uh, several people uh, she interviewed and then uh, um, combined the interviews in um, a short uh, documentary uh, uh, that she presented. Uh, there was a student last year um, uh, who did uh, something similar about uh, uh, issues of uh, uh, race, about what it means to be uh, uh, um, black or white in, Fra in uh, France. Um, and of course, it's an issue there too, but it is mapped and conceptualized uh, in such a different way that uh, you can't just go with your um, American questions and ask them of French people because they wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, so uh, uh, the questions need to be uh, reframed and reconceptualized uh, to get at issues that uh, uh, confront all cultures but uh, are understood differently in different uh, uh, countries. Yeah, and I, I've 
worked with several students who have carried out community projects. Um, I already gave the example of, of Nadine's project. So I actually want to give an example of a, a different project that I actually didn't mentor, but that stands out in my mind, which is um, a student a, a few years ago uh, worked on a translation project with my colleague, Jose Ballesteros, who is a professional translator as well. And she carried out the first uh, translation into Spanish, actually, um, which is her first language. Um, usually you translate into your first language, but she uh, completed the first book length translation of a Mexican American poet from California's work into Spanish from the English in which it was originally written and uh, got to meet with the author and had that book published. So um, again, connection between the St. Mary's Project and the professional world uh, can be very close. And, and we, we aim to help students achieve that connection. Yeah, and speaking about translation, uh, if you have been on campus, you might have uh, noticed both in the great room and in other places that there is this poem on the wall, uh, Blessing of the Flea, uh, which is by um, uh, a major African-American uh, woman poet who was connected to Saint Ma uh, with St. Mary's for um, uh, over a decade. Yeah. And a couple of years ago, there was uh, a student who, um, and actually it was a male student, which was uh, um, interesting and challenging because uh, he connected with her poetry. He was uh, um, uh, a Latin ex student, but uh, I mean, there was also this interesting tension of, uh, um, you know, as a as a man, as a male student, to translate uh, uh, poems by uh, a woman who often uh, uh, um, dealt with issues that uh, would be considered uh, uh, women issues, and of course the issues of um, discrimination, mar marginalization, are different for uh, uh, different groups. Yeah? So I think that was um, a brave thing to do, uh, a challenging thing to do, and also something that uh, uh, was rooted in the St. Mary's context, but at the same time uh, involved uh, a kind of global cultural uh, uh, context, which I think is um, typical for a lot of things uh, uh, we do. We are very committed to um, uh, our own place at the St. Mary's River, uh, but we have this window on um, the world. Yeah. And I don't know if, uh, I don't want to put Umu on the spot. I don't know if you've be are you at the stage where you've begun to think about your SMP? I don't know if you're doing it in our department or in biology. Oh, I'm actually doing it in biology. <sighs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, maybe Umu, can you talk for a second about being a double major? Because we get a lot of questions about that. Like, you know, I'm interested in French, but I want to major in this. Is it possible to double major? How hard is that? So how has that been for you? Um, I would say it's possible. It's just sometimes the classes do overlap with the labs in biology. But as a third year, I would say we do make it work. Um, yeah, I would I would thank my advisor for always sticking with me and always trying to help me figure out how it's going to work. But so far, it's, I think it's manageable. Okay. And it's also a good balance. Like I said earlier, um, having the biology classes are fun, but also I enjoy having a French class because it's different. It's different. So rather than always learning about math and science, I get to do something I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we have a lot of students who are doing like, uh, you know, I have a student who's doing math and French, biology and French is pretty common, psychology and French. Yeah. And uh, it's almost in some ways more common to have that than like history and French, which might seem more uh, yeah. like a more natural overlap. But, um, but yeah, we get double majors or major minors um, from all over and, and we work with them to help 
help make it work. We do advising in class. And like Umu said, you work with your advisor. So um, you get, a, yeah, we definitely work a lot closely with students to make that work for them. Yeah, in Spanish, we happen to have a lot of, in addition to the combinations that Professor McLeod just mentioned, we have um, uh, a frequent combination between Spanish and political science. Uh, yes, that too. Yes, that's true. That's a mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those double majors uh, also lead to very interesting uh, uh, St. Mary's projects. There was uh, one a couple of years ago who was uh, a double major in math and uh, Spanish and who had uh, a study abroad in Spain and uh, she had an interest in uh, fashion also. And uh, she had become interested in uh, oh, right. yeah. uh, kind of Islamic motives, yeah. the kind of geometrical uh, uh, figures. And so she did something with uh, uh, Spanish and then the geometrical figures that she analyzed from a kind of mathematical perspective uh, and then integrated into uh, uh, fashion, uh, which I think was what she wanted to go into uh, after graduating. Yeah. Any questions? Anything else for our students? I have one final question. Yeah. Um, I was interested in working um, during the semester and I was just wondering, do you guys offer any study abroad options during the summer? I just think it'd be really hard for me to study abroad like during a fall or spring semester if I work too. Um, there are many options, not only study tours with our faculty members, um, but also uh, several of our exchange partners have summer programs. Um, the only thing to consider is that during the semester, all of your St. Mary's aid applies to your study abroad program and, and to your uh, costs. Gotcha. Uh, during the summer, you can't apply federal aid to um, or St. Mary's scholarships. Um, you can apply for private scholarships to, to help with the cost of uh, study abroad either in the summer or during the semester, but that, that's the only um, difference. Okay, could I ask another question? Of course. I know that it's common um, sometimes to do like small kind of study abroad, like maybe during winter break or spring break. Is that the same? Like, do you not get the same scholarship because it's over a break? Um, yeah, I would say that's probably the same. Sometimes uh, in the past, we've had study abroad tours integrated into courses. Um, uh, and occasionally there is a study tour over winter break. I'm thinking in, in a language relevant area, not necessarily. Um, but, but in terms of scholarship aid, that would be the same situation. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Um, but again, I want to emphasize that um, there is funding uh, that one can apply for to support study abroad if, um, if forsaking income from uh, uh, work during the semester is an issue. Um, there are scholarships that you can apply for beyond um, the St. Mary's scholarships that would apply to your study abroad semester anyway, because you've secured that um, aid for any semester. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, no, we will make it possible. That's, that's sort of my answer okay. is there is a way we will make it possible because it, it's such an important experience in our minds. And when we were talking about uh, uh, Fulbright's uh, Maybe one thing to mention is that, uh, I mean, we have um, uh, students who become Fulbright assistants uh, uh, in uh, other countries. Uh, this is something uh, that um, um, you can apply for when you're a senior uh, um, and you spend a year um, abroad um, after you graduate, yeah, the teaching is um, 
important, but uh, at the same time, uh, the hours that uh, you're supposed to work are um, not that much. And you're basically paid to explore uh, a different culture for uh, a year. Yeah, so that's also um, an opportunity. I think it's a very nice uh, bridge between uh, uh, being a student and then uh, either going to graduate school or becoming a professional uh, upon uh, return. Not everything needs to happen um, uh, while you are at St. Mary's. And if you're interested in ESOL, that is a particularly relevant experience. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to also we have, uh, I mentioned that um, our graduate Nadine did this, but um, we've had several graduates in Spanish teach um, via, I think they call it a cultural ambassador through the Ministry of Education in Spain um, to, under those auspices, teach English for a year in Spain. And again, they pay you a salary, provide housing, and, um, and you're teaching English. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, maybe Professor McLeod can talk a little bit about uh, CLS uh, opportunity for our students. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. sure. So, um, yeah, so CLS, it's, it's called, uh, it stands for the Critical Languages Scholarship, uh, and it's run by the, uh, the U.S. government. And the idea is to send students to countries uh, where there are languages that are critically important to the United States, but which are often not always taught. Um, in American universities. Uh, they do have a Chinese program, uh, however, um, but we have had a student go to Azerbaijan to learn Azerbaijani. Uh, we've had a student go to Korea to learn Korean. Uh, you can also learn Hindi. Um, you can learn uh, Swahili. Uh, there are a lot of different uh, languages. Uh, and Arabic. Arabic as well, yep. And uh, so I've worked with students to uh, help them with their applications and uh, we've had pretty good success over the years so uh, for students that are interested in a language that we don't offer here um, that is one way that we try to help you uh, off campus um, get that experience and it's a really amazing program it's really life-changing for the students that have done it so um, we try to make sure you know like what's out there what other scholarships are possible and we can give a lot of one-on-one -on -one help uh, it doesn't have to be a St. Mary's specific program for us to like help you apply and, and get accepted. Yeah, and I have a quick actually, question about CLS. Oh. Several students who um, uh, go to Europe for master programs. So if you study a language uh, uh, at St. Mary's, um, I mean, it's a, well, it's a, a, a much cheaper way normally uh, uh, to get a master, they tend to be of very high quality, and many of them uh, are in English. But of course, uh, uh, the more you know of the language of the country uh, um, the, that offers the program, uh, uh, the more you will get uh, out of it. Yeah, but that's also um, uh, a great way to kind of extend your language study uh, and make use of your language study and get, gain money uh, from your language study after you uh, leave St. Mary's. Someone had a question about CLS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so um, I've looked into CLS in the past and I was mm -hmm. interested in the Arabic program. However, with Arabic, you needed a couple years prior um, instruction. How would how would one go about that if that's something I'm interested in, but St. Mary's doesn't offer That's, that's a great question. Um, so I, th I believe it's two years uh, of college level study or the equivalent. Um, so I know sometimes students do study on their own and then uh, make the case um, in their application that they have that equivalent. So what I've done in the past with students when that was the situation is recommend either look at summer classes in your area, if you're able to take like a, um, uh, to take a summer class in the language or uh, look at what textbooks classes are using like introductory college Arabic textbooks and then work through that on your own and then I actually um, helped select uh, was on a selection committee uh, for a couple of years looking at applications and one thing you would see is students that would say well you know I got this textbook and this textbook and I've been working through it uh, and I've been practicing you know on my own and I believe that I'm at this level um, so it is possible to do. It does take a little extra time and initiative, but, um, but those are my two recommendations, like see what you could possibly take over the summer or uh, 
look at what colleges are using to teach like intro Arabic classes, get those materials, supplement with what, what else, other things you can find online. Um, and then you can make the case like, well, you know, uh, I have the equivalent of two years or two semesters or whatever they're asking. Um, and that okay. is acceptable for them. Okay, thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would also add that we now have a study abroad program in Morocco. Yes. Right? So, great. so yes. Oh, yeah. Thanks for a making francophone, that up. but also a chance to learn Arabic. Yeah, that's a great program. And uh, yeah, you can learn French and Arabic at the same time. Yeah, we're excited about Perfect. that. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, Jillian just joined us. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I don't know, we were actually, we just, it, this is actually a nice segue, we were just <laughs> talking about um, study abroad and Jillian was in Ecuador this semester before she had to come back. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and I don't know, uh, Tammy, how are we doing on time? Are we okay? Do we have time for Jillian to just talk briefly about um, So I don't think there's another session. That's what I was looking at to make sure that we weren't keeping students from that. The next one I think is at one. So um, yeah, I think it's fine. Um, students don't feel like we're being, you'll, we're insulted if you have to go because we certainly understand that we're going late. But yeah, we'd love to hear from Jillian. Okay. So yeah, Jillian, how was Ecuador? It was amazing. I loved it. It was so beautiful. So what, what did you do? Uh, what, what classes did you take? Mm -hmm. um, so I got to Ecuador um, early January, January 10th, and I started with an internship for a month. Um, I, I chose to do an internship at a school in Quito. So I was working as a TA for um, some, some of the English classes there with, I was working with 10th and 8th graders, which was really fun, really awesome. Um, and then after that, I moved to Cuenca and I was supposed to stay in Cuenca until June 3rd. Unfortunately, I did have to come back early, but I was there for about two months um, taking classes at the University of Cuenca there. Um, so I was taking two classes at a time. So I started out with advanced grammar and advanced composition. I'm currently still taking environmental studies of Ecuador. Um, and then hopefully later online, I can finish, I can take um, and then finish um, uh, uh, contemporary indigenous studies and Quechua. Wow. Um, so I'm looking forward to those classes as well. Right now we're, since I'm, since we were quarantined and then now I'm home, we're doing them through Skype because it's me and my friend, the other student who was in Ecuador um, and just a teacher. So it's a really nice, um, close, small class that you can learn a lot. Very cool. And you're a math and Spanish major. Yes, I'm a math and Spanish double major, yeah. And, and have, we had asked Umu the same question about her double major. Has that been a manageable arrangement? Yeah, definitely, yeah. I was able to um, organize my schedule so I could just spend the semester focusing on Spanish when I studied abroad which really helped. I can just take lots of Spanish classes and do, I was able to do a big portion of the major this semester and then I'm mostly finished. I have, I think, one or two classes to finish it up. Great, thank you. So do any of the students have questions for our students or any other questions, something we haven't covered? I'm going to come back and say thank you then. Um, I don't, um, a couple of sessions I had the professors go ahead and put their emails in the chat, but um, they're also available on the website. So um, let me do that right now. Okay, yeah. Um, and that way, if you guys have follow up questions, you also can always email admission at smcm.edu and we will point it, your question in the right direction. Um, so let's just give a couple, another minute for people to post their emails and then we will say thank you and goodbye. And, um, and again, I'm chair, so I teach Spanish, but if you email me, Joanna Barto, um, I can direct you to anyone in the language programs of your choice. So thank you so much everyone for your time on both sides. <laughs> um, I hope that 
our prospective students found this valuable. Um, I learned a lot. Um, and I appreciate the professors popping back on when they're doing this all day. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, 